This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Today for your viewing pleasure, I have a Grumman jet that could fold back on itself. We've already covered bottomless money pits like the Convair Pogo, and yeah, landing on its tail is pretty crazy stuff, but wait till you see this one. Furthermore, since the engineers had some fat paychecks and time to spare, they also created a second version of this aircraft and called it, well, the son of the first one. Anyway, this is the unhinged, nutty story of the Grumham G674 and its son, the Nutcracker. The thing with Navy aircraft is that, as with every other aircraft, they have to land somewhere. And when that somewhere is a small patch of steel in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, it presents an issue. So the smart guys created aircraft carriers, big ass ships with the ability to carry bunch of aircraft on board, obviously, and serve as mobile airports. Problem solved, right? Wrong. Well, you see, they're extremely big, expensive, and require a crew of a couple thousand sailors to operate. They're slow, and you need to slap a dozen other ships and submarines around to protect them, because good luck explaining why $10 billion is now at the bottom of the sea. So how do you have an Air Navy wing without having to rely on aircraft carriers? It's by making the aircraft themselves more flexible, and in this video's case, literally. If you have an airplane that can take off and land on the same piece of flat surface as a helicopter, known as a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, then that could make your life quite easier. Nick, could you please stop teaching us how the VTOL aircraft works and show us the nutcracker? Okay, okay, sorry, here's the actual story. It's the 70s, and we need a solution for the problem mentioned before. An aircraft that can land and take off from a very small flat surface that could turn any ship into an aircraft carrier. Grumman said, fine, we'll do it ourselves, and started working on a new project. The base of this design would be the OV-1 Mohawk, yes, this weird looking thing. But of course, the turboprops would never be able to create enough power for this design to take off vertically, so first things first, let's switch over those engines for jet ones, shall we? Now comes the fun part, how do we make it able to land pretty much anywhere? The Nutcracker G674 was designed so the rear section of the fuselage would be able to rotate 90 degrees downwards along with the engines which would allow it for vertical takeoff and land to and from a platform placed at the aft section of a destroyer, frigate, cruiser, well basically any ship large enough to carry a helicopter at the time. The platform would have a sort of a docking arm or crane which would connect with a probe to the aircraft before the final touchdown to provide extra stability when landing. Just like a hummingbird feeding on the nectar of a flower. Wait, why didn't they call this thing the hummingbird in the first place? Ah oh, well, let's move on. There was a landing gear somewhere tucked away, but the plans we find today make it kind of unclear how that would have worked. All we know is that the platform would raise up underneath the plane, with the aft section moving up at the same time, returning the aircraft back to a horizontal position. Now imagine all of this taking place in even slightly rough seas, and you have a nightmare. But let's still humour the idea for a minute. The main task of these aircraft would have been anti-submarine and recon missions, but also electronic warfare, such as jamming enemy communications. The Nutcracker G674 was also conceived to have civil applications as well, which was certainly ambitious ambitious for the time. Armament would have been very limited because of the nature of the aircraft design itself and the takeoff weight limitations, so it's more likely to imagine it in the aforementioned submarine type of missions. This would give it great flexibility to every type of ship it would be based on and could create a very effective submarine hunting task force. 
And why was this so important, you may ask? Well, you see, Soviet Navy doctrine during the Cold War was not an offensive one, rather defensive, with the main offensive force being the, you guessed it, submarines. Soviets poured a lot of money into the development of many different types of nuclear and non-nuclear powered subs with tasks of either delivering the end of the world or simply hunting and destroying US carrier groups. And they were good at it at least theoretically. So the US faced the issue of covering the extremely large territory of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans with their Navy fleets. And this is where our nutcracker friend comes in. Groups of smaller ships like destroyers and frigates armed with various anti-submarine weaponry could cover vast areas of the ocean to detect and possibly engage the enemy if the need arises using the Nutcracker as the frontal spotting mechanism to hunt down these submarines. But how far did the development actually come? Well, in 1975, Grumman applied for a patent of this new aircraft, which was designated as the G674, stating Marshall J. Colbert and Robert W. Cress as the inventors. Several scale models were built and tested, and before you say Pixar didn't happen, here you go. But you know what, if it looks stupid but it works, it ain't stupid. But this didn't work. So yeah. The thing is, the landing part would have been extremely hard, the pilot would be very limited with time and visibility with no ability to tell exactly where the tail was underneath them. And rough weather would have made this a game of Russian roulette and having the entire second half of the fuselage hanging on a single point of failure is naive to say the least. Noticing these failures, Grumman went the logical way and started developing normal horizontal VTOL aircraft. No, they actually doubled down and made a son of a nutcracker. Sons should be better than their fathers and the Grumman G698 was just that. Unlike the crazy daddy, the Sun actually made it to the full scale model phase and had engines chosen for the project. General Electric TF-34s, the same ones used in the A-10 Warthog down the line. And I know you want that A-10 video, so just hang tight and we'll get there. Maybe subscribe if you like what you've seen so far, so you don't miss it. Back to the son of the Nutcracker, the main difference which would make this thing actually work is the fact that there would be no need for bending the rear end of the fuselage down, rather the engines themselves would be able to rotate and make the aircraft come to a full stop and then land vertically like a conventional VTOL aircraft, sitting like a bird on a perch. This is basically the philosophy designed to the F-35B which is a swivel nozzle and a lift fan which are used together during takeoff and landing to give it the ability of vertical flight. So you know, the idea wasn't actually dumb. Also, they figured out that the obvious use of this aircraft would be electronic warfare and recon missions and would be able to actually carry armaments unlike its old man, such as the AGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missile to be exact. The G698 was actually presented to the public at the 1981 Paris Air Show and flown remotely for a couple of presentations but this is as far as it gets with this concept. It did suffer some of the same problems that other VTOLs have, such as inadequate control authority when the craft is in hover mode, excessive mechanical complexity, poor structural integrity, and erratic stability and control during transitions, to say the least. You have to keep in mind that this aircraft would be extremely complicated mechanically and would require special snowflake status. And it was also in development in parallel to the V-22 Offspray. The Marines, who the aircraft was being developed for, wanted a transport vehicle more than the Nutcracker and what Marines want, Marines get especially the crayons. So the project ultimately was canceled. As I said before, the tilt fan concept was a good thing and actually used to some extent in the development of the F-35, so we can't say that the Nutcracker project was a complete failure. Rather, another interesting story in the history of aviation and a monument to human ingenuity. Now go on and crack that nut in honor of the Nutcracker. 
The engineers, when they came up with this, must have thought that they had seen the future. It was truly learning what was possible in a new way. Just like how you can learn in a new way with today's video sponsor, Brilliant. Learn interactively. Brilliant has a huge range of hands-on lessons on maths, physics, and more, and because they're so engaging, you're up to six times more likely to understand than watching simple lecture videos. Brilliant is also perfect for all ability and knowledge levels, massively boosts creative problem-solving skills, and help you solve real-life problems, all with very clear and intuitive examples. I've actually used Brilliant's courses on classic mechanics to better understand the very machines that you're watching right here. After all, these are real-life designs and deserve real-life animations powered by maths, thanks to Brilliant. There are many other courses from solar energy to cryptocurrency as well, so dive in. If you want to get started for free, use my link down in the description. Head to brilliant.org slash found and explained to get started. And the first 200 that sign up also get 20% off an annual membership. Back to the show. If you like this video today and you want to support the channel more than just sitting through various ads, then why don't you become a Patreon? You get to see videos early, suggest topics, and talk to me directly. Thank you so much for watching, especially those Marines who know it's all good fun and aren't upset. Thanks again.